Well then, I spoke up, in a voice not quite my own. The sound piped in. As expected, there was no reply. She could have been asleep, could have been crying, could have been dead. I sat down opposite her and rubbed my eyes. A short ray of sunlight divided the table. Me in light, her in shadow. Colorless shadow. A withered potted geranium sat on the table. Outside, someone was wandering down the street. Splash on the pavement, smell of wet asphalt. Want some coffee? No reply. So I got up and went over to grind coffee for two cups. It occurred to me after I ground the coffee that what I really wanted was iced tea. I'm forever realizing things too late. The transistor radio played a succession of innocuous pop songs, a perfect morning soundtrack. The world had barely changed in 10 years, only the singers and song titles, and my age. The water came to a boil, I shut off the gas, let the water cool 30 seconds, poured it over the coffee. The grounds absorbed all they could and slowly swelled, filling the room with aroma. Been here since last night? I asked, kettle in hand. An ever so slight nod of her head. You've been waiting all this time. No answer. The room had steamed up from the boiling water and strong sun. I shut the window and switched on the air conditioner, then set the two mugs of coffee on the table. Drink, I said, reclaiming my own voice. Silence. Be better if you drink something. It was 30 seconds before she raised her head slowly, evenly, and gazed absently at the potted plant. A few fine strands of hair lay plastered against her dampened cheeks, an aura of wetness about her. Don't mind me, she said. I didn't mean to cry. I held out a box of tissues to her. She quietly blew her nose, then brushed the hair from her cheek. Actually, I planned on being gone by the time you returned. I didn't want to see you. But you changed your mind, I see. Not at all. I didn't have anywhere else I wanted to go, but I'm going now. Don't worry. Well, have some coffee anyway. I tuned into the radio traffic report as I sipped my coffee and sit upon, or slid open the two pieces of mail. One was an announcement from a furniture store where everything was 20% off. The second was a letter from someone I didn't want to think about, much less read a letter from. I crumbled them up and tossed them into the waste basket, basket and then nibbled on leftover cheese crackers. She cupped her hands around the coffee cup as if to warm herself and mixed her, fixed her eyes on me, her lip lightly riding the rim of the mug. There's salad in the fridge, she said. Salad? Tomatoes and string beans. There wasn't anything else. The cucumbers had gone bad, so I threw them out. Oh. I went to the refrigerator and took out the blue Okinawa glass salad bowl and sprinkled on the last drops from the bottle of dressing. The tomatoes and string beans were but chilled shadows, tasteless shadows, nor was there any taste of the coffee or crackers. Maybe because of the morning sun. The light of morning decomposes everything. I gave up on the coffee midway, dug a bent cigarette out of my pocket, and lit up with matches that I had never seen before. The tip of the cigarette crackled dryly as its lavender smoke formed a tracer in the morning light. I went to a funeral. When it was over, I went to Shinjuku, by myself. The cat appeared out of nowhere, yawned at length, then sprang into her lap. She scratched him behind the ears. You don't need to explain anything to me, she said. I'm out of the picture already. I'm not explaining, I'm just making conversation. She shrugged and pushed her brassiere strap back inside her dress. Her face had no expression, like a photograph of a sunken city on the ocean floor. An acquaintance of sorts from years back. No one you knew. Oh, really? The cat gave his legs a good stretch, topped it off with a puff of a breath. I glanced at the burning tip of the cigarette in my mouth. How did this acquaintance die? Hit by a truck. Thirteen bones fractured. Female? Uh-huh. The seven o'clock news and traffic report came to an end, and Light Rock returned to the airwaves. She set her coffee back down and looked at me in the face. Tell me, if I died, would you go out drinking like that? The funeral had nothing to do with my drinking, only the first one or two rounds, if that. A new day was beginning, another hot one. A cluster of skyscrapers glared through the window. How about something cool to drink? She shook her head. I got a can of cola out of the refrigerator and downed it in one go. She was the kind of girl who'd sleep with anyone. What an obituary. The deceased was the kind of girl who would sleep with anyone. Why are you telling me this? Why indeed? I had no idea. Very well. She picked up where I trailed off. 
She was the kind of girl who'd sleep with anyone, right? Right. But not with you, right? There was an edge to her voice. I glanced up from the salad bowl. You think not? Somehow, no, she said quietly. You, you're not the type. What type? I don't know. There's something about you. Say there's an hourglass. The sand's about to run out. Someone like you can always be counted on to turn the thing over. That's so. She pursed her lips and then relaxed. I came to get the rest of my things. My winter coat, hats, things I left behind. I packed them up in boxes. When you have time, could you take them to the parcel service? I can drop them by. She shook her head. That's all right. I don't want you to come. You understand, don't you? Of course I did. I talked too much, without thinking. You have the address? Yes. That's all that's left to do. Sorry for staying so long. And the paperwork? Was that it? Uh-huh. All done. I can't believe it's that easy. I thought there'd be a lot more to it. People who don't know anything about it all think so, but it really is simple. Once it's over and done with. Saying that, she went back to scratching the cat's head. Get divorced twice, and you're a veteran. The cat did a backstretch, eyes closed, then quickly nestled his head into the crook of her arm. I tossed the coffee mugs and salad bowl into the sink, then swept up the cracker crumbs with a bill. My eyes were throbbing from the glare of the sun. I made out a list of details, where papers are filed, trash days, things like that. Anything you can't figure out, give me a call. Thanks. Had you wanted children, she suddenly asked. Nah, can't say I ever wanted kids. I wondered about that for a while there. But seeing how it ended up like this, I guess it was just as well. Or maybe if we'd had a child, it wouldn't have come to this. What do you think? There are a lot of couples with kids who get divorced. You're probably right, she said, toying with my lighter. I still love you, but I guess that's not the point now, is it? I know that well enough myself. That's that. And then, very briefly, this is a collection of poetry. It's a publication called Durable Goods that we uh, picked up from the Toledo Open Mic. So I'm just going to read through those really quick. Figure out how this is set up. Alright, this first one is, I wanted to tell you. I wanted to tell you that nobody knows you. Not your husband, not me, your lover, not you. Twice loved by a man who's loved his idea of you this last decade and a half. And this man who loves you for the idea of me. I wanted to tell you that nobody knows me. Not your husband, unaware of your lover, not you. Twice loved with no idea how to return love these, past, these last three and a half decades. Not this man who loves with no idea how to love himself. That's by uh, Carl Koweski. And then the next one is The Inevitable Thing. Good God! He has a baseball bat between his legs! My wife says and covers her mouth trying to block the grin that slips, slipped on her lips as the pizza boy flipped the lid of a pepperoni pie and presented a wide-eyed bombshell with what Edgar Allan Poe called The Inevitable Thing. No, no, I say, the air siphoned from the Friday night. The camera adds six inches. I sigh. But my wife knows, and I know, and anyone who has watched Pizza Bone 6 and seen the sheer fear in the bombshell's eyes when that lid was flipped, yes, you know, too. So I turn to my wife and suggest some popcorn in the new movie, one where the hero dies at the end. That's by uh, Nathan Graziano. That's it. So, thank you.